by 1932, its migrations to the southwest had made it a nuisance to wheat farmers. The series of actions that followed came to be known as the Emu War. It's a topic that's captured the hearts and minds of internet users all over the globe. How did the Australian Army lose a war to a bunch of flightless birds? While it may seem comical now, the Great Emu War, spanning just over a month in 1932, was serious business. So, how did the conflict start exactly? After World War I, many returned Australian servicemen were given land by the government in the Wheat Belt region of Western Australia, with hopes they would start a new life. That didn't quite go to plan. The Great Depression of the early 1930s sent wheat prices plummeting, and farmers expanded their crops as they looked to muster a profit. That's when the emus showed up. As many as 20,000 migrating emus found their way onto farms after breeding, in the process destroying fences and valuable grain. Soldiers were deployed with machine guns, but their feathered foes proved elusive. The emus are more than holding their own, read one report from the Daily News dated November 3rd. Only 20 emus were reportedly killed on the first day of battle, with many more injured. An ambush on November 4th went awry when a machine gun jammed, with just 12 of the 1,000 assembled birds killed. When the army withdrew on November 8th after six days of battle, Two and a half thousand rounds of ammunition had been used to kill between 300 and 500 emus. In a second cull, soldiers destroyed thousands of emus before a ceasefire was called on December 10. Now the war is stuff of legend, with stories passed down from generation to generation. Ralph English's father managed a property next to the battleground during the emu war. Ralph says when in full flight, the birds do serious damage. Like when they, when they had dry seasons up in the pastoral areas, the emus would just naturally migrate south. And of course, as soon as they come across some wheat or something in the paddock, they thought they were in heaven. So they'd, the worst part about emus is that they, it's not what they eat, it's what they flatten. Like they just tramp around out in the crop and knock it all over and play in it and and just, just be a damn nuisance. In Meriden, 60 kilometres south of Campion, library manager Wendy Porter has trawled through the archives where she's uncovered little known details about the battle, including two men who reportedly tried to pay their tax with dead emus. That's actually how I f first found out about the emu wars. I was looking, just going through the papers, um, you look at all the ads and the um, court reports and all that, it's interesting because of how they wrote. Um, there was no political correctness, none of this, it was, so it gets very interesting. But I actually saw an article on two wheat belt farmers who decided to pay their um, tax bill or try to pay their tax bill with emus. So then you do a search on emus and then the emu wars come out. She says talk of Western Australia seceding from the rest of the country contributed to the army being called in. Going through all the reports, it became clear to me that it, there had to be something else around it. And that's when I started finding the information that WA was talking about seceding. So looking further, and there's reports um, saying that there was problems in WA, we need to help them. So who won the war? It's hard to say. Some say the emus lost the battle but won the war. Others say the farmers lost, having used so much ammunition to kill such few birds. One thing's for sure, Australia greatly underestimated the emus.